Hey folks, so for today's video I'm going to be taking a look at the operating system uh, brought to you by System76. This is Pop OS. but just before I crack on with today's video, I do want to give you guys a bit of a heads up. As you know, I do stream a fair amount of games on this channel, and uh, truth be told it's not been doing the channel too much good as of late. So I'm going to be trying to do a fair amount of uh, streaming when it comes to video games, at least over on my Twitch channel. So I've put the URL down there, twitch.tv slash chrisware. Uh, I know how many of you guys feel about Amazon as a company. Trust me, I feel very much the same way. So I promise I won't enjoy it too much, but you know, I'm sure you can appreciate how YouTube is from time to time. It's rather temperamental in that kind of regard. So I've got the URL down there in the terminal. So anyway, uh, yeah, Pop OS. This is 1804, the long-term support release. Um, and as you can see, there are some of my computer specs there. And yes, I am indeed running a 1440 by 900 resolution monitor, uh, which is why I off you often see screens running at, um, at the 19 by 10 aspect ratio rather than, for example, the more mundane uh, 16 by 9. So I've got the default pop uh, uh, layout, and uh, I've got to admit, just right off the bat, it looks like a really nice distribution. So it's based on the GNOME desktop. We've got GNOME 3.28.3. Uh, um, and uh, it's been a while since I tried GNOME. So as you can see here, I've got four applications that are open. I've got Caden Live. Now this is a flat pack um, because uh, when it comes to things like Qt apps, uh, the integration isn't actually uh, all that great. Now I've got an example here. I've got KeyPass XC. So obviously I won't log into it too much. But as you can see, it is uh, maintaining the default sort of Qt theme for this kind of thing. In fact, I think I might even have used uh, what is it, QT5 settings, and install that to manage to adjust some of the fonts. But as you can see, uh, some of the options are limited. I'm sure I could uh, use this application, maybe install a few other things to actually get um, some better QT themes working on it. Uh, as you can see, the the uh, the, um, the font there is uh, a bit more in line with the theme, as are the icons. But uh, but yeah, uh, the Qt uh, stuff doesn't match. So what I actually did with this um, distribution installation was actually when it came to pretty much most apps, I used the Flatpak repository rather than the native apps. I'm quite familiar with Ubuntu's uh, native repositories, and there are uh, a good selection of software there. But I wanted to see if Flatpaks could fill in the gap, and it can in a great deal of ways. And in fact, because Flatpaks are packaged. Um, by the developer in a lot of cases, um, they often are packaged as the development team sort of imagine them. So when you get something like Caden Live here, uh, it comes sort of set up with its uh, theme that comes packaged with it. And you even get a few choices of, you know, you get Breeze, Breeze Dark and all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't fit in with the overall theme of the operating system. Quite frankly, not that it needs to, but it does look quite good and it uh, works uh, really quite well. I know that in the past, Caden Live has uh, not always worked, you know, particularly well with GNOME environments. But over the past couple of years, um, I mean, over the past couple of years, Caden Live has just uh, progressed leaps and bounds. It's an incredibly complex piece of software, um, and um, and watching it grow into something that can compete with the best of them, and I mean that sincerely, um, is absolutely wonderful. I do pretty much all of my videos using this piece of kit now, and uh, I do it across a variety of distributions. It's nice to know that a flat pack is available. I often use the app image as well for very similar reasons um, and with app images you know the exact specific version that you're running and you actually have a lot more version control in that regard but yeah I've been using flat packs I'll probably edit this on a flat pack video um, uh, uh, on the flat pack Caden live and uh, but as you can see here as well I've got a QT app with a uh, simple screen recorder that is uh, recording me there so uh, this is the flat pack of Abbey Word. And as you can see, with GTK apps, there is a uh, significantly more integration there. And I've got to say, actually, uh, Abbey Word looks pretty nice in, uh, in that regard. So uh, it's a little bit more basic when it comes to uh, word processing. But to be honest, most people don't need advanced word processing tools. Uh, most people generally can be quite happy with uh, with Abbey Word. I don't use Abbey Word too much. I am a bit more of a LibreOffice guy. Uh, I like the control, the granular control. You can get over the styles. You can put contents pages in, all that kind of stuff. You get some pretty nifty features with LibreOffice, as I'm sure you do with other uh, pieces of kit. So um, one of the things that I did quite like about it is that it does come... Uh, it comes with a, like a very near stock version of the GNOME desktop. So you don't get, for example, um, the uh, the uh, system tray in the top right hand corner like you might do with Ubuntu um, 
which I believe in their latest LTS, they actually put it used, uh, they built in a plugin that allows you to have the system tray icons. And I've got to admit, I haven't really missed them too much because you have this dock across on the left hand side. And that basically acts as a well, a, as a dock, it's like your one stop shop for uh, all of the applications that are open and your favorites that aren't. So that does work really quite well. The only problem that I see are certain applications that require the use of a system tray. And I'm specifically thinking of Dropbox, but I'm sure there are others that can't just be minimized away, you have to actually to get into the Dropbox settings, you have to right click on the system tray icon, and I believe you have to click something like preferences. So if you are running Dropbox on GNOME, I think I, I've run into trouble in the past with this, um, but it'd be interesting if any of you guys actually, um, uh, if any of you guys have, have um, managed to mitigate those problems. It's not that um, Dropbox doesn't work, and maybe perhaps you have to break into the command line, perhaps. Um, but um, yeah, when it comes to like changing settings and preferences I uh, on the desktop, I, I think you do run into some problems with GNOME. So one of the reasons behind Pop! OS, it seems, is not only to have a like a nicely well-crafted distribution specifically for System76 laptops, and as you can tell from my hardware here, uh, I'm not running a System76 laptop, so I'm likely not going to be enjoying all of the benefits, and I've run into one or two hiccups which I don't know if I would have um, come across if I was running a System76 machine. And also, and this is just sort of my limited um, running it for the past couple of days now, is um, the support structure does seem to come uh, sort of from the from System76 themselves. So it doesn't it's, it doesn't seem and I could very well be wrong on this one. But it doesn't seem that it's got the, the same kind of community behind it like you might see with Ubuntu, or even with very community esque distributions like uh, Manjaro and Linux Mint, which uh, rely very heavily on the community. And quite frankly, I think are quite stronger distributions for it. So anyway, uh, that being said, um, it's a very good looking I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. And it's smooth as silk, although that being said, this is a pretty speedy machine. So I don't necessarily know um, how, uh, how fast, uh, how uh, resource intensive it is, but we can do uh, HTOP here. And uh, so it's actually running at four and a half gigs of memory out of uh, just under 16. So that's, I mean, that's not great. But then again, you look at some of the, the programs that are open, I'm actually currently recording with system uh, screen recorder, I've got uh, Caden live. Um, I got a web browser up on the uh, on the other desktop over there. So um, yeah, actually, truth be told, that would probably be maybe where I would expect the uh, the the RAM usage to be at. Um, and I have noticed that on things when the GNOME desktop is idling, it's not using as it feels that it's not using as much RAM as it has done in the past. I, it does feel that GNOME may be a sort of tightening up, or it could in fact be a System76 um, edition as well. But um, but I have heard uh, rumors through the great, through the grapevine that uh, that GNOME are hoping to uh, to tighten up some of the resource usage. But again, I, that's only sort of what I've heard. So I have no idea if that's uh, <laughs> how accurate that is. Uh, so I've been using the terminal quite a fair bit as well. In fact, I think I might have done this in previous uh, versions, but you can see here, this is my list of, of flat packs. But go into NeoFetch. The font isn't the font on this uh, on on the GNOME terminal absolutely wonderful. I absolutely love this font. In fact, we can go into Start Preferences uh, Profiles. Is it going to be Profiles? No. What do we got here? Colors scrolling. Oh, my, it was right in front of me. Yes, a Fira Mono Regular. So that's it. And I do believe when it comes to the theme, because this is a nice looking theme, I do believe that it is actually available, uh, that you can actually bring it in to use on other GNOME environments. I think there might be a PPA or a, I think it might be available from um, from another source. So I'm not entirely uh, certain, but I do believe that you can actually get the Pop! OS theme uh, even if you are not using the Pop! OS distribution, which uh, seems pretty cool. But I particularly like this sort of, is it like a, a serif -y font? It looks like a little, you know, it's got a little bit of a classic-y style to it, um, which is, uh, which is, which is, uh, I don't know, it's just really easy on the eyes, I think. Um, so uh, what else is there to say about it? Um, oh, one of the things that I really do like about, and this is probably more of a GNOME thing than a Pop! OS thing, is that new windows tend to open up 
underneath your currently active windows. Uh, sometimes, like personally, if you're like working on something and you've got an application loading up in the background, you're quickly switching between apps, and to have an application just pop up in your face um, at an inopportune moment is is a bit irritating. So what I do quite like with with GNOME is that it does seem that the window replacement, although it pops up, uh, it doesn't steal focus um, like other desktop environments that I've previously used. Uh, do which is um, it's I'm still uh, there's a lot to this that I'm actually still getting used to because the known paradigm uh, is significantly different to just about every other of the desktop environments but some of the changes that they make some of the um, status quo that they go against actually uh, you know that there are good reasons for it and you know once you get used to it you can actually appreciate some of the uh, the nuances of the known desktop and some of the areas where they've slimmed down the UI as much as I love a customizable desktop environment there are many 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 people out there that want a standardized desktop interface and just want to run applications and go um, and I think GNOME can, can work pretty well for that as well you've of course got GNOME, the GNOME tweak tool which I've decidedly not installed because I did want a very um, uh, I wanted a very out-of-the-box experience in that regard um, so I don't think I have too much to say because I'm sort of really just rounding off uh, my, my general usage. Uh, Steam and the Steam games and Proton, uh, all of my Proton games that worked on my previous Manjaro installation uh, also work across on this Pop! OS installation um, and I would imagine that's a lot to do with the underlying Ubuntu base and when it comes to testing Steam software, uh, Valve recommend that developers test to um, I think it's, one of, it's either the latest Ubuntu uh, long-term support release or the one before that, so like 14 04, for example, would be the one, or, or um, 16.04, rather. God, getting old now. Um, so yeah, so 16.04 might be sort of the, the traditional desktop that um, Linux games on Steam are tested against. And then, of course, um, that should uh, translate quite, quite smoothly across the later versions of Ubuntu. Anyway, it works quite well, and that's no surprise given it's uh, under the hood credentials. Um, there are a few things that I didn't particularly like. Uh, it didn't seem that there was an easy way to get my VPN to connect on boot, uh, where, whereas there was in other environments. Now I'm sure I could probably switch out the desktop um, uh, or the network manager tools. Uh, I didn't try, so I can't say for certain. But um, yeah, having to switch on my VPN every time I boot up is... I don't know, it's one less thing that I'd, I'd rather not do, but uh, it's all quite straightforward in that regard. Also, I did find that the sound settings much less customizable. I found it more difficult. I, well, I didn't even find, find an easy way to um, disable sound devices that I don't use. So, for example, you may notice that I sometimes use a headset. There's a microphone on that headset, which isn't a very good microphone. So I do like to disable it um, using in the Pulse Audio settings. Uh, disable it completely so, so, if I, so no application risks picking it up um, by accident which I didn't uh, manage to do with the sound settings. To be honest, over time, that became less of a problem as I started getting into the flow of the desktop environment, but it was just uh, something there. And I did notice that there has been a little bit of an issue with their main theme, as you can see here, where you've got the show applications and the simple screen recorder icon um, have sort of overlapped here, and that happens occasionally on this. Um, I did look at the GitHub page, and it, there is a bug filed for it, and it was filed in April, so... I don't necessarily know, um, you know, what, what's that? That's a bit of a, a a bit of a sort of issue down there. That um, I'm, I mean, they've re they've confirmed it as a as an issue, but um, I'm hoping to see that. Uh, I'd like to see that rectified at some point. Uh, so I've got some notes here, but I think I've pretty much covered here. I think I've pretty much covered everything. I did have some issues with the files application, the file manager, where um, it wasn't necessarily showing image previews correctly, but after an upgrade and a restart, that seemed to seem to go away. So um, overall, actually a really quite a nice distribution, but I did come across some of the paper cuts, uh, which is basically a, a bit of a technical term for lots of small errors that are fixable or things that you can see past. Um, which uh, my gut tells me that might be less of an issue if you were running it on a native System76 mach machine. And I did kind of get the the sort of the essence, the feeling that um, that this is really one more for System76 machines. i got to say, damn good show that they've released it for everyone to try out and test out as they wish. And um, 
but I think I'm probably going to be moving on to a different desktop environment as my daily driver. Now, this video is going to be going out shortly after I record it. You could probably even tell from the uh, the timestamp up there as to how long it takes me to edit and get out the door. Uh, but if you are watching this maybe a couple of hours after this video is uploaded, please feel free to let me know if there are any distributions you'd like me to try directly after this down in the comments section below. Um, I'm not going to be able to take on all suggestions and I have some ideas in mind so don't feel bad if I don't necessarily take on your suggestion but if you have any particular enthusiasms on a dist enthusiasms yeah I'm going to go with it uh, for any distributions that you would like me to specifically check um, then uh, then feel free to let me know down in the uh, comment section below I got to admit I'm leaning slightly towards Linux Mint Debian edition um, a lot of you guys have told me how much you love Debian and how rock solid it is uh, and I've always quite liked the kind of layer of polish that Linux Mint have put on top of not just Ubuntu, but on Debian itself as well, as well as the additional um, codecs that come with it. And of course, that it comes with Flatpak support out of the box. Uh, not that it, Flatpaks are difficult to install. So anyway, thoughts are welcome down in the comments section below. And um, that's about it for me today. Uh, please feel free to check out my Twitch channel and... Um, uh, and and follow me or subscribe or do what the thing on the Twitch that you click the the button and um, and I'll, I'll be streaming some games on there at some point uh, soon. So thank you very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And uh, yeah, until next time. I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.